पॉलिसी बाजार पर एक करोड़ रुपए का टर्म लाइफ इंश्योरेंस केवल चार सौ पचास रूपए महीने ऐसी शुरू Hello I'm Sneha Koshi and let's take you through all the major stories of the day. India is on covid alert and even as cases increase globally there were preparedness drills across hospitals in India today. But the daily cases still remain less than 200 with no deaths being reported. In fact uh, if you are planning a holiday this new year there are some countries that are best avoided travel to Brazil, South Korea, Japan France and US which seem to be reporting the highest number of cases. Union Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia at Delhi Safdarjung Hospital to review a mock drill taking place in hospitals across the country to check preparedness of beds, ventilators, oxygen, emergency drugs and healthcare professionals. amid concerns about a possible surge in covid cases jo covid treatment dene wali sabhi hospital mein mock drill ki ja rahi hai taki hamari sari hospital covid case desh mein badhe to sampurna tarike se taiyar rahe clinical readiness of hospitals was assessed like quickly moving dummy patients from the triage area through admission to a bed every variant brings about different features to the virus every wave is different and we must be prepared for this and mock drills help us to assess our preparedness at assam's guwahati medical college hospital that is northeast india's biggest covid facility the focus is on ramping up icus and other logistics see till today we have treated more than 3 uh, 36800 cases which is one of the highest uh, we did a mock drill today we have prepared 100 icu beds like before which was there and 56 general beds vaccinations have also gone up from less than 50000 a day to over 1 lakh in telangana there has been a 400% jump in vaccinations in 72 hours already the state tops in booster dose coverage of 48% as against 22% for the country dusra wapas aa raha na ma usko aaj se wapas lene ke liye aaya dusra do tisra dose le aaya booster dose ha uske liye aa raha hai wapas se zyada aa raha na usko aaj se le liye with new year celebrations also coming up people have been advised to wear a mask and follow precautionary protocol with vedant in delhi sri jain bengaluru ratnadeep in guwahati uma sudhir in hyderabad for ndtv and in a setback for the uttar pradesh chief minister yogi adityanath the allahabad high court that quashed the rapid other backward caste survey done in 2017 said that local polls will not have obc quota The chief minister though has declared that the state will give reservations to other backward classes or OBCs in the local bodies and would hold a survey under the Supreme Court guidelines the election will not be held before the survey and grant of reservation and if need be the state will go to the Supreme Court to challenge the Allahabad High Court's order for immediate notification of elections Uttar Pradesh mein 2022 ke varsh mein जो निकाय चुनाव होने वाले थे उसमें कुछ याचिकाएं माननीय उच्च न्यायालय में दाखिल हुई थी उस संदर्भ में आज माननीय उच्च न्यायालय का निर्णय आया है राज्य सरकार का सोचना है कि माननीय उच्च न्यायालय के निर्देशानुसार आयोग गठित करके ट्रिपल टेस्ट का की जो प्रक्रिया है उसे पूर्ण करके हम ओबीसी को आरक्षण देने के बाद ही हम चुनाव कराएंगे और उसके बाद जो चुनावी प्रक्रिया है उसको हम करेंगे हम इसके कानूनी पहलुओं को और भी हम गंभीरता से गहराई से अध्ययन कर रहे हैं और अगर आवश्यक होगा तो हम सुप्रीम कोर्ट भी जाएंगे हमारे वकीलों की सलाह लेकर के हम इस विषय में अध्ययन कर रहे हैं बहुत ही दुर्भाग्य है कि हमारा पिछड़ों का हक छीना जा रहा है और ये केवल पिछड़ों का हक नहीं छीना जा रहा है भारतीय जनता पार्टी सत्ता में रही 
तो जो बाबा साहब भीमराव अम्बेडकर जी ने अधिकार दिए हैं उन अधिकारों को धीरे धीरे छीन लिया जाएगा अभी कुछ चीजें दिखाई दे रही हैं और कुछ चीजें नहीं दिखाई दे रही हैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी हमेशा आरक्षण विरोधी काम किए उसने भारतीय जनता पार्टी आरक्षण विरोधी है पिछड़ा विरोधी है दलित विरोधी है इन्हें संविधान की किसी भी व्यवस्था से कोई मतलब नहीं है and two chief ministers have been almost sparring over each other even if it be on words over the border dispute that's between Karnataka and Maharashtra chief minister shinde has said we will take 865 villages from Karnataka Maharashtra assembly has passed a resolution in fact this comes just days after Karnataka passed a resolution over this decades old row which seems to be brewing between the two states a tit for tat resolution in Maharashtra Assembly after a similar resolution was passed in Karnataka Assembly over the border dispute. A strongly worded resolution by Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde on Tuesday promised to bring 865 Marathi speaking villages in the state of Karnataka to Maharashtra. This proposal passed unanimously also seeks to take all the schemes of the Maharashtra government to these villages. मान्य सर्वोच्च न्यायालयात प्रलंबित असलेला सीमावाद सनशीर मार्गाने अत्यंत खंबीरपणे दृढ निश्चयाने व संपूर्ण ताकदीनिशी लढा देण्यात येईल द वॉर ऑफ वर्ड्स बिटवीन द टू बीजेपी गव्हर्नमेंट हॅड फोर्स्ड होम मिनिस्टर अमित शाह टू इंटरव्ही ही मेट द चीफ मिनिस्टर्स ऑफ कर्नाटक एंड महाराष्ट्र एंड अनाउंस द मॅटर विल बी रिझॉल्व्ड इन द सुप्रीम कोर्ट डिस्पाइट दैट द टू चीफ मिनिस्टर्स हैवन लेट अप इन देयर अटॅक्स लास्ट वीक द कर्नाटक असेंबली पास अ रेझोल्यूशन to not let even an inch go to the state of maharashtra avde samvidhana ta kanunina idu avakasha illa ivattu namma vakuta vyavasthege dakke taruvanta reetiyalli av resolution madidare idanna nam teevra reetiyalli kandistivi former chief minister of the thakre who has mooted the idea of turning the disputed areas into union territory supported the resolution but question the state government's claim of taking its schemes to the disputed villages the border conflict between maharashtra and karnataka is going on for decades while resolutions have been passed by both the governments these resolutions are nothing but just political statements because the matter is currently being heard at the supreme court the bjp which always speaks about double engine government is present in both maharashtra as well as karnataka but despite that since there is no solution on this issue the opposition is questioning both the state as well as the center in mumbai with camera person rajendra dayalkar sohit mishra ndtv and ndtv has accessed fresh cctv footage where actor shizan who has also been arrested in this particular case is seen taking actor tunisha to hospital the family bid their final farewell to tunisia whose last rites were held today she was found hanging um in her on her set and is uh, reportedly died by suicide Well Hardik Pandya is to lead in T20s versus Sri Lanka and Rohit Sharma to lead in the ODIs versus Sri Lanka it's a massive change in team India even as some big names have been dropped joining me for more on this is my colleague Rika Rika um, is this a surprise or expected big names being dropped Neha India's home series uh, begins on the 3rd of January with Sri Lanka coming and uh, uh, after India's uh, dis- dismal performances in uh, T20 World Cup and uh, in the ODIs uh, in Sri Lanka changes were expected but it seems that uh, 
the selectors have decided to uh, go for some bold moves, uh, uh, reinstating uh, Hardik Pandya as the T20 captain who had captained India in the uh, uh, New Zealand series when uh, Rohit Sharma was unavailable. Uh, Rohit Sharma had come back to lead India in uh, in Bangladesh, but then he was injured once again. So he was out of the side. Uh, uh, we had uh, two different uh, two uh, captains for two different formats. Sharma will be coming back, but what's surprising is that the ODI captain Shikhar Dhawan has been left out of the squad at the start of a World Cup year, perhaps because of his poor strike rate. Also, Rishabh Pant does not find place in either the ODI or the T20 team, so that's a bit of a surprise there. KL Rahul has been dropped from the ODI team. From sorry, the T20 team is of course a part of the ODI team. Um, also, Virat Kohli, you know, he, uh, Virat Kohli it seems has been rested once again from the T20s, and he's returned. He returns for the ODI against Sri Lanka. So big changes there. Primarily, the focus is on the uh, One Day World Cup that will be staged uh, later this year to get the best team out in the park. And as a result, select the selectors are looking at. Uh, the possible combination and the best 11 uh, who can fit into the team for the World Cup. Well, thank you, Rika. And for now it's time for a short break. Welcome back. Two deaths in four days of two Russian nationals in the same hotel in Odisha seem to have raised suspicions as at least one of them, Pavel Antov, was recently viewed as a Russian president, Putin's critic. Two deaths in four days of two Russian nationals in the same hotel in Orissa's Raigara. The deaths raising suspicion as at least one deceased, Pavel Antov, was recently viewed as a Putin critic. However, the Russian embassy told NDTV. We are in constant contact with the relatives of the deceased as well as with the local authorities. As we know, police do not yet see a criminal component in these tragic events. Pavel Antov is believed to have fallen from the third floor of the hotel in Orissa. The police is now investigating whether this is a case of death by suicide or an accidental fall. A member of the Legislative Assembly from the Vladimir Oblast, a sausage multi-millionaire and a philanthropist Antov was apparently on vacation in Orissa. He was traveling with a group of four, out of which his friend B. Vladimir was found dead the morning after they checked in. Vladimir is believed to have died due to a stroke after consuming alcohol. This emerged after his autopsy report. Raigada district mein jo do Russian citizen ka death hua hai, uske upar natural death ka case register kiya gaya hai. Iski taiki ka tabi police dwara jari hai, aur dono disease ka postmortem report aana jari hai. Humne visera bhi scientific examination ke liye preserve karke rakha hai, aur niche aapke samne ham jo bhi investigation ke tathya aenge, wo samne rakhein. The death by fall is uncannily similar to the fatal fall of another Putin critic and oligarch. Ravel Maganov in September this year. He fell from the window of a hospital in Russia. The Western media has been reporting that earlier this year, Pavel Antov had put out a message that was critical of Russia's war in Ukraine, comparing it to an act of terror. Though this message was put out only briefly and immediately retracted, but he was viewed as a critic of Vladimir Putin, something that can be dangerous in Russia, considering that there have been examples in the past of sudden and mysterious deaths of those who criticize him. And that is why the fatal fall of uh, Pavel Antov now falls in the realms of suspicion, though the police in Orissa is investigating this as a case of death by suicide or accidental fall. In New Delhi, this is Maha Siddhiti for NDTV. And Russia has issued a decree to ban oil sales to countries and companies that comply with a price cap agreed by Western countries in response to Moscow's offensive in Ukraine. Joining me for more on this is my colleague Maha Siddiqui. Maha, so from 1st February till July, it's a six-month ban that uh, Russian President Putin seems to have announced as a response against the price cap by Western countries. 
That's right, Sneha. And very much on expected lines, Russia had already said that any country that goes ahead with the price gap, uh, Russia will not want to supply oil or oil products to them. And this is what they have done now, but this is in the form of a decree now that has been set out, which will be effective from 1st February for the next uh, five months beyond that. Uh, Russia is not going to supply oil and oil products to any of the countries that impose the price cap of $60 a barrel, uh, which has been decided by the G7, EU, and Australia. Now, uh, the countries uh, uh, hope that, uh, these, these are the Western countries that hope that by doing this price capping, they will be able to squeeze the oil revenues of Russia, which they believe is fueling the war in Ukraine. Well, thank you very much, Maha. Now, the last of China's disastrous zero-COVID policy done away with as China ends the mandatory eight-day quarantine rule for inbound travelers from January 8th. A step taken to move away from a self-imposed global isolation after nearly three years. This amid reports of China struggling with its worst COVID outbreak yet. <laughs> Visitors to China will now only need a negative COVID test obtained within 48 hours of departure from their home country. While the Chinese government will also be making visa arrangements for foreigners to come to China. Limits on the number of international flights will also be removed. These changes come as China downgrades COVID management norms from the top level category A to a less stringent category B. Chinese citizens have mixed feelings about this sudden U-turn. Some are relieved and eager to get back to normalcy, but others are critical of the timing and implementation of these changes. The China's latest move comes despite reports of almost 20% of the country's population being infected with COVID. Now, despite shocking videos emerging on Twitter, the Chinese government has remained tight-lipped on how severe the situation really is and has now refused to even publish updates on daily infection numbers. It remains to be seen how this further easing of norms will play out in a country already struggling with the pandemic. Nayantara Singh for NDTV. You may have seen brides dancing on their weddings. Well, this one at Trishul's Guruvayur Temple had a bride play the chenda, which is, you know, to loosely translated as a traditional drum, with her father, a chenda master himself, and the groom both joining her on Monday during the wedding. The smiles say it all, and the video, needless to say, is viral.